Space Mountain, Disneyland and Disney World. Big Thunder Mountain, Disneyland and Disney World. Splash Mountain, Disneyland and Disney World. The Matterhorn, Disneyland and... Yeah, so what's up with that? Why are all of the classic Disney mountains in both Disneyland and Disney World except for the Matterhorn? Well, the Matterhorn, similar to all of the other mountains at Disneyland, was not an opening day attraction. For the first three and a half years of Disneyland's existence, that space where the Matterhorn sits was a giant hill of dirt that was dug up to make the moat for Sleeping Beauty's castle. Eventually, Disney wanted to replace the hill with a toboggan ride in an artificial mountain that would serve as both an attraction and a way to hide the central pylon of the Skyway in Disneyland. Walt, on vacation in Switzerland during a film shoot, was inspired by the actual Matterhorn and bam, the Matterhorn bobsleds were born. The ride opened in 1959 and it was a hit. And as a result, Walt subsequently came up with the idea for a space-themed version that would go in Tomorrowland. However, due to space issues and technological limitations at the time, the idea was put on hold. On top of that, Disney was putting resources and time into developing four attractions for the New York World's Fair, not to mention planning the Florida project that would eventually turn into Walt Disney World. When it came time to plan the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World, it was decided that Fantasyland didn't have the space needed to work the Matterhorn in, so it was dropped from the initial plans. Keep in mind, this was the late 60s and early 70s. The theme park industry wasn't what it is today, so the lack of a thrill ride wasn't as big of a deal back then. Later, when Disney did want to add some kind of roller coaster into the Magic Kingdom, they instead opted to revisit Walt's original Space Coaster idea, which would eventually become Space Mountain. Like the Matterhorn, it was a hit when it opened, prompting Disney to redesign the track with Disneyland's limited space in mind in order to make a West Coast Space Mountain viable. So that's how Disneyland ended up with both the Matterhorn and Space Mountain, while Disney World just had the latter. It doesn't end there, though. In the late 70s, Disney finally began work on planning a theme park version of Walt's original idea, Epcot. Disney would find another potential opportunity to bring the Matterhorn concept to Disney World while planning the Japanese pavilion. You see, instead of the Matterhorn, the mountain-based coaster would be centered around Mount Fuji in Japan and would offer a thrill ride experience for World Showcase. Fujifilm originally wanted to sponsor the attraction, but Disney was eventually convinced by Kodak a major sponsor and competitor to Fujifilm, to drop the idea. Japan would ultimately not see the ride come to fruition. A few years later, Disney tried again when they put together plans for a Switzerland pavilion in World Showcase, which would feature an East Coast version of the Matterhorn. Those plans also fell through. However, a good idea is usually bound to rise to the surface at Disney, and when it came time to plan for a thrill ride at the Animal Kingdom in the early aughts, Disney once again revisited the mountain coaster idea this time theming it to Mount Everest, and that's how we got Expedition Everest. So while Disney World technically is still without the Matterhorn, and while it did take nearly half a century and two failed attempts, Disney World did eventually get its own fourth mountain. 